I don't really know a nicer way to put this, but Intel got screwed. Before I get into this video, I want to say that my YouTube analytics shows that only 4.2% of my total viewership is subscribed to this channel. If you enjoy this video or any of my other videos and want to see more content, then subscribing is the fastest and easiest way to be notified when new videos are posted, and it helps me plan future content and bring you guys more of what you want to watch. But with that out of the way, let's start talking about Intel. Alright, so I'm almost 100% sure that at least some of you guys are aware of what's been going on behind the scenes over at Intel within the last couple of weeks. And just in case you don't know the full scope of the issues, let me catch you up real quick. So the first thing to break was Intel's announcement of their internal delays on their 7 nanometer EUV lithographic node until at least 2022. This immediately tanked Intel stock, which caused the company to lose a cool 17% of their market value in less than 24 hours. And while that's not as bad as the plunge they experienced at the start of the ongoing pandemic, this loss of value wasn't driven by an external factor and was directly caused by Intel's announcement of delays. On top of that, Intel's CEO was just caught buying shares after the plunge, so that's always nice. But more recently, 20 gigabytes of confidential intellectual property was leaked and was immediately dug through to discover the contents. While I'm not going to go into extreme detail about what was contained in the leak, as I don't want to be spreading confidential copyrighted material, what was found though included source microcode, BIOS source code, architectural schematics, and plenty of marketing information and internal documentation regarding past releases. On top of that, the password used to protect these high-level, highly confidential documents was, wait for it, Intel123 and the leaker made sure to specify that this is the state the documents were in when they were used internally, meaning he didn't change any of the information or set new passwords for the documents. Now, ignoring the weak password choice, this leak is a huge blow to Intel internally, because it blows the doors wide open on their R&D findings, and also has the potential to create a security risk even greater than that of Spectre or Meltdown. Now, thankfully, from what we can tell, the leaked microcode comes from a KB Lake chip, so it's already a few generations old. But with this microcode, you can modify it to do, well, anything as long as you're addressing the hardware. And for those of you who watched my Intel 10th gen analysis video, you'll remember that the Skylake family of microarchitectures, which includes KV Lake, Coffee Lake, and Comet Lake, already have huge security issues due to an issue in the branch predictor that momentarily reveals private data when a branch is mispredicted, leaving it open for an attacker to copy and ultimately transfer to either another location, or worse, encrypt it. Now at least this wasn't as bad as Meltdown, which could have full unrestricted access to your system's memory, but the security vulnerabilities greatly eroded enterprise trust that they had with companies such as Microsoft, and ultimately caused them to lose out on contracts to AMD. Now I'm bringing this up to show that CPUs are susceptible to security and privacy breaches, and while the engineers at Intel, ARM, IBM, whoever you want to pick, are very good at their jobs and are not intentionally designing these flaws into their microarchitectures. But when information that's released, that's intended to be a backdoor into the lowest level of hardware and software in a particular microprocessor, it becomes a lot harder to design security checks for information and techniques that shouldn't even be available to the public. And if anything that's been going on with China and TikTok, at least in the US, over the past few weeks are a sign of where things could be headed, these security vulnerabilities could become a massive issue moving forward, once countries around the world begin to adopt more military cybersecurity. On top of that, these sorts of hardware access issues can be exploited to not only steal information, but also lock up systems by corrupting data and memory, or even completely overwrite an instruction or command. This is a huge issue, but can also be patched in software by Intel as long as they don't allow the source code to be leaked once again. But along with this massive leak, we also got information about the upcoming 7 nanometer EUV lithographic process, but it wasn't exactly great news. 
Back in July, Intel announced a delay of 7 nanometer into at least 2022. And with 10 nanometer parts still being pretty thin on the ground, it really shook up investor confidence in their ability to compete with AMD in the near future. Now, while the lithographic process doesn't determine performance, using smaller nodes allows for voltage to be conserved, reducing power requirements, and allowing more of the power budget to either be conserved or allocated to a different process. This is why AMD made a mad dash to 7 nanometer with Zen 2. And when comparing general performance figures, core for core and thread for thread, AMD is coming incredibly close to, but still not exceeding, the IPC value of Comet Lake. While Zen 2 is built on a smaller node than Comet Lake, the performance isn't all that different from the larger 14 nanometer based Skylake chips. However, smaller nodes allow for more circuitry to be packed into a given die space, allowing for more computations to be carried out, increasing the chip's performance. The CPU isn't performing well because of 7 nanometer, it's performing well thanks to 7 nanometer, which allows the engineers to increase the transistor density, increasing the relative computational power. I went over all this stuff in much greater detail in the Intel video I mentioned earlier, so if you're curious about the topic, I highly recommend you check the video out. But getting back on track, why is it so important to investors that Intel gets to a smaller lithographic node sooner rather than later? Well, it has to do with a couple different factors. Firstly, and probably most importantly, building more powerful chips on a larger node means that the chips will be physically bigger, increasing the amount of silicon needed to print each chip, which in turn lowers the amount of dyes you can fit on a wafer. This all adds up to lower profit margins and requires more work from Intel to produce the same amount of chips than if they were made using a smaller node. Take Ice Lake, for example. It utilizes the 10 nanometer plus lithographic node and features redesigned CPU cores codenamed Sunny Cove. On 10 nanometer, the size of the cores is actually somewhat comparable to first generation Skylake cores, meaning that Sunny Cove cores take up the same die area, but pack more circuitry into an area than what was possible with Skylake. Now take the leaks for the Intel 11th gen core i-series CPUs, and we should be getting Rocket Lake meaning we'll have some variant of Sunny Cove, most likely either Willow Cove or Cypher's Cove, printed on 14 nanometer. So since more circuitry is packed into each core, when backporting from 10 nanometer, the circuitry will take up more die area, increasing the size of the core. On top of that, when you're working at this small of a scale, keeping the trace routes and transistor layouts the same and just bumping up the dimensions to fit a larger node will not work because the capacitance and voltage requirements will increase, meaning that you have to essentially redesign the layout and re-optimize traces to make it just work on a larger process. The same thing goes for porting 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer, and it's just an unavoidable issue thanks to physical properties and laws of physics. But if Intel is able to get their ducks in a row and provide an impressive cove port, I think we could see an Intel make a comeback stronger than the one AMD started only a few short years ago. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Before ending this off, I'd like to say that I would not recommend downloading or even opening any of the leaked files on your systems if they're made publicly available. It's not only really dangerous as you don't know all the contents of the file, but it could also get you in some serious legal trouble, and that's why I won't be linking any direct sources in the description. However, if you search Intel in any mainstream search engine, you'll be able to find all the information and more than what I covered at the beginning of this video, and I recommend you do some research on it if you're at all interested in the engineering that goes into these processors. But it was a lot of fun talking, and if you want to learn more about computer hardware or software, then the annotations on screen are a great place to start. Thanks for spending your time with me, and thanks for watching.